There's been a spate of violence in some parts of the country where there is lockdown. And now the security, security enforcement agencies have been active in trying to quell them and ensure safety of citizens in Lagos. Gangs have reportedly caused trouble in certain areas. And joining us live via Skype to speak on the security situation under the COVID-19 lockdown is Dr. Ona Ekomu. Good morning, Dr. Ekomu. Good morning, ma'am. Thanks for having me. Good to have you. Um, now, we've seen rising spate of insecurity during this lockdown. Did you anticipate this as a security expert? Um, well, thank you for that question. I, I issued a release sometime um, under the auspices of my association, that's the Association of Industrial Security and Safety Operators of Nigeria, uh, back in... Um, well, that's uh, right before the first lockdown, that's uh, late uh, March, and um, saying that there's, bound, there's going to be, that's I predicted an increase in property crimes. And then, but I didn't see the increase in violence, um, which we have seen in certain parts of the country, not necessarily in Lagos. Uh, we've seen uh, violence in many other parts of the country, but I did call out this one very clearly that um, we're going to have a lot of store break-ins, we're going to have home invasions, and uh, we're going to have street attacks, um, primarily to uh, get food to eat, because um, uh, because of the structure of our economy, uh, most of the young people do not have um, uh, savings. They are not able to, um, you know, take care, go you know, go into their savings and take care of themselves. So I did predict at that time, and I did issue a release also uh, in the press that uh, we're going to have uh, these kinds of uh, security incidents. So is this always associated with, uh, I mean, with, this pandemic is a new one for us in Nigeria, but uh, should we associate these security challenges with the pandemic? And is it normal that when there is a pandemic such as this, uh, we should anticipate this sort of behavior? Um, well, no, ma'am. Um, uh, security uh, deviant behavior, criminal behavior is not a feature of pandemics. Uh, uh, it's the strategy uh, the, uh, that's employed by health workers or by the government that uh, determines what comes out on the other side. After all, we've had pandemics here before. Um, not pandemics. We've had epidemics here before. We've had uh, Ebola. We have Lassa fever, which has... Uh, as of last count, killed about 200 persons uh, this year, I believe. And uh, so we, we've been dealing with that. Uh, but you see, Lassa fever does not call for a lockdown like we have here. It calls for deratization. And uh, so that has worked well for that. Now, uh, the feature here uh, with coronavirus is that uh, uh, we don't know, we don't have a cure yet, we don't have a vaccine, we don't know a lot of things about the uh, virus, but we know that if we contain people in their homes, uh, that will become a mitigation measure because they won't, we can't have a community spread like we are having right now. So that's what it is. Um, it's um, really a feature of not, quote unquote, in their own words, uh, not having food to eat. Like when they attacked me wrong recently, the miscreants, the bad boys were saying, it's not our fault, it's government that locked us up, there's no food to eat, you know, and they were justifying, as it were, their uh, criminal acts. And uh, so that's really what it is, it's uh, about that. Now, what about, why is it happening? Well, it's because we have uh, an absence of capable guardianship. This is from routine activity theory. You know, it says that if you have a capable guardian, uh, criminals will be deterred not attack because they are afraid first for themselves. They don't want to die or anything like that, or they don't want to be injured or even incarcerated. But if they feel that there is no capable guardian, so you see the areas that are being attacked, a lot of the um, uh, far suburbs, uh, Alakuko, Agege, Dokbemu, you know, those kinds of places are receiving a lot of uh, the brunt of the attacks because it is... Uh, consider that there isn't effective policing in those areas. That's how come you have the landlords and uh, the residents now spending all night doing vigilant, uh, vigilance work because um, the police is not able to control crimes in those areas. 
All right, Doctor, we already have COVID-19 to contend with. And as you do know, there are conversations. We, we are not sure whether we are going into two weeks uh, national lockdown or if we are still where we are. But whatever the case be, what would you suggest as the best pos possible solution uh, to this rising insecurity? Well, I think um, our citizens have out of necessity found the best solution. The best solution right now is vigilantism. Because we don't have enough police uh, resources, we don't have enough, well, we, we certainly don't need military resources out on the street in the kind of strength that's going to uh, curb it. Uh, but I think vigilantism will be the best thing, like what we have right now. It's just that it needs to be organized. And then the uh, landlords, uh, the people who are doing the vigilance work, need to know, you know, what uh, needs to happen here. Uh, they are doing a lot of good things, for example, they are putting up bonfires, they are creating uh, access control by blocking the roads. Uh, they are increasing visibility at night with the fires, uh, making a lot of noise. Criminals don't like noise. Um, and then they are, of course, arming themselves, perhaps illegally with cudgels and knives and sticks and what have you. But the problem I have is that uh, you don't, it's not organized, it's not well maintained. So people are going to have a lot of health problems, falling sick, maybe even people get injured while they are doing their vigilance uh, uh, stretch. So I think um, this goes back again to the neighborhood uh, watch concept, the neighborhood policing concept, That's, that citizens are first and foremost their own um, security. Uh, this is uh, from a statute of Winchester. Uh, 1285 in, in England. So the, what we need to do is look at how citizens can be the vanguard of security at this difficult time. And then these um, public agencies can now be a backup uh, to them as it were. So I think if it's a little bit better organized by landlord associations and, um, and uh, certainly everyone is cooperating because they are afraid now for their lives and for their families, uh, they take ownership, they take accountability, and they take responsibility. But right now, waiting on the police agency to do it for us will not work. So I think uh, the best option is the vigilance route. Uh, and then beyond that, Amotekun can kick in when Amotekun is working uh, well. That's beyond the lockdown. But in terms of the lockdown itself, whether we should have a, a next one, I think it's ill-advised. Uh, it would be ill-advised of government to lock down again one more. We, we, we can do a balancing act because the numbers suggest right now that uh, PTF is going to advise the president to continue the lockdown, but it's going to create, you know, even uh, a greater security problem than we are seeing right now. And I'm going to be issuing a release on this in a day or so. On the heels of that, I want to ask you two questions in one, which is, first of all, do you see our security apparatus well equipped and prepared for this in the face of COVID-19? And if not, what are your recommendations? Um, uh, thank you. Well, <laughs> the, the problem is, it's not in the middle of a hot one that you go and start buying guns and bullets. Uh, that's, that's the problem with that. So that calls for, that means planning. Uh, this um, uh, th this event was foreseeable. Uh, this uh, lockdown, it was quite foreseeable. Of course, the pandemic wasn't foreseeable, but the lockdown was foreseeable because we could see signs that uh, we were moving in that direction, that uh, things were happening. The infection was coming in right from 27th of February. We had the first index case arrive in Nigeria. It would have appeared to me that was the time for our security agencies to start planning uh, we we'll call that preparedness. Start planning, organizing, using uh, trend data to forecast what they will require, what kind of uh, resourcing uh, will be required, what kind of funding will be required, such that uh, when this thing does hit, and it did hit eventually, uh, that uh, when uh, on March 30th, when the president pronounced the first two-week lockdown and then subsequent um, extension of the lockdown, when this thing does hit, that we'll be prepared for the contingencies. I think the problem here is really perhaps maybe a little bit of impunity uh, because uh, people are not punished for not providing effective security for the public. Uh, they just get away with it and then we just wave and move on. So I think um, uh, the agencies need to be better resourced. 
Um, I, I spoke as in another uh, program recently about strategic planning. Uh, this is where we are missing the curve. So we always do tactical planning. We are always struggling for just the next operation, for the next um, incident. Uh, and in fact, we are not even able to control it properly, uh, rather than taking a, a deep breath and looking at what, how do we look, what direction is law enforcement going in this country, and how are we going to uh, better serve the citizens of Nigeria by providing quality policing services. Thank you very much, Dr. Onai Komo there, and please do stay safe where you are. Thank you very much. I'll try, and you too.